Welcome to Greybeard's Jewels, a step into the unknown. Episode 3, The Goal. Have you ever wanted a literal extra set of hands? A physical extension of yourself that could do as you bid it? Take on tasks, protect you from enemies, or do your heavy lifting? What if that same creature could perform darker functions? Hunt those who have wronged you. Remove anyone who stood in your way. Torture, kill, or drive to madness. How much power would you give to such creation? And how could you possibly hope to control it? These questions have fascinated and terrified us for generations. Because according to legend, the golem is such a creature. Made from mud or clay, this creation will follow any command you give it, at least for a while. The origin of the golem can be traced back through Jewish legend to the ancient Talmud, which claims Adam himself was a golem until God breathes his soul into his nostrils. But the beast we know today was first recorded in the late 16th century. The Maraharo of Prague, Rabbi Judith Lowell ben Bezello, sought to protect the Jewish people from Prague from massacre brought down from the rulers who sat in their castle high above the tangled lanes and twisted alleys of the Jewish quarter. Rabbi Lowe collected mud from the Volvita River and used it to mold a superhuman gold, bringing it to life by inserting a shim, a clay tablet bearing the name of God, into its mouth. The golem thrummed into life and towered up as a hawking man-like creature with eyes that seemed to glow. The golem worked tirelessly to protect the people of the Jewish quarter, bringing a sense of safety and security these persecuted people never dreamed possible. According to Jewish custom, Rabbi Lo deactivated his creation for the Sabbath, allowing it a day of respite. However, one Sabbath he became distracted and forgot. As Rabbi Lo was reciting Psalm 92 during the Sabbath services, chaos poured through the doors of the old new synagogue. His golem was on a path of destruction, raging through the ghetto and wrecking everything in its path. The same people who had once revered the golem for protection he provided now fled and hid in terror. Small children wailed behind their mother's skirts. Men rushed to build barriers to try to contain it. Rabbi Lowell confronted his monster outside of the synagogue and wrestled the shem from its mouth. The golem was never again revived and Rabbi Lowell hid his terrifying creation in a synagogue bag, where it remained locked for centuries. To this day, Psalm 92 is recited twice during services in Prague's most famous synagogue. The attic vault was not opened until journalist Egon Erwin Kish set out on a fruitless search for the golem in the 20th century, but nothing remained of the pile of mud that was once the golem, or was it ever there at all? The Jewish people of Prague weren't the only ones who sought the assistance of a golem in what is perhaps the earliest testimony referencing golem building. Non-Jewish folklorist Christoph Arnold wrote of the Polish Jewish people in 1674. After saying certain prayers and holding feast days, they make the figure of a man from clay, and when they have said the explicit and unmentionable name of God over it, the image comes to life, and although the image itself cannot speak, it understands what is said to it and commanded of it. Among the Polish Jews, it does all kinds of housework, but it is not allowed to leave the house. Arnold also wrote of the Polish golem builders, inscribing the word emeth, meaning truth, on the golem's forehead each day. The golem grew a bit, from a small lump of clay to a towering, immense figure. To control the golem's strength, creators would erase the first letter from the word on its forehead, leaving only mouth which means dead. Upon erasing the letter, the golem would collapse and dissolve into the clay or mud that it once was. The most prominent tale of a golem from Jewish Poland was that of Rabbi Elas Belshom. He served as chief rabbi of Shlom, a town in eastern Poland. Rabbi Elias was a renowned Talmudic scholar and Kabbalist, and first Belshom, or one said to possess secret knowledge of the holy names of God. Who could be more aptly equipped to create a golem but this man? Rabbi Elias created for himself a golem that became so large that the rabbi could no longer reach his forehead to erase the letter E. But the man of learning was not to be outsmarted, and he thought up a trick. 
The rabbi told the golem to remove his shoes, and being but a servant who must do as his creator bids, the golem stooped to do so. As he bent to remove the shoes, Rabbi Eli deftly erased the E and waited in satisfaction for the golem to return the mud. As the creature crumbled, the massive pile of mud fell atop the seated rabbi, who was crushed to death under the weight of his own creation. Some scholars argue that the golem of Poland, the golem of Prague, are really one of the same. A legend crafted from tales told around the hearths of Jewish homes. But who is to say that not one, but two such creatures could exist in Eastern Europe at that time Jewish people sought help and protection? Though the realness of these two golems is debated, it remains fact that instructions on how to create a golem have been in existence for thousands of years. The Sefer Yezerah, or Book of Creation, was a guide to magical usage employed by some Western European Jewish people in the Middle Ages. It contained instructions on how to make a golem. Translations of the instructions vary amongst rabbis, but most versions include shaping a figure resembling a human and using God's name to bring it to life. According to one story, the creator would shape it out of soil, then walk or dance around it, saying a combination of letters and the secret name of God. To kill the golem, its creator would walk in the opposite direction, saying the order of the words backwards. Other interpretations posit that to bring a golem to life, one must write God's name on a slip of parchment and place it under the golem's tongue. And just as Polish folklore claimed, some interpret the instructions to be to write the word Emmet on the golem's forehead and to erase the first letter to stop the golem. Regardless of how one creates a golem, legends are consistent in the fact that golem building does not end very well. In some iterations, golems of lore follow instructions so explicitly that the creator cannot hope to close all the loopholes that would eventually cause destruction. In others, golems eventually turn on their creators and seek to destroy them. In the Yiddish folktale of the clay boy, a lonely couple creates a clay child golem, only to have it eat and grow incessantly until he devours his parents. The legends of the golem have permeated far beyond the Jewish communities where they were born. Jacob Grimm published his own retelling of the golem of Shlom, based largely on the accounts of Christoph Arnold, and most scholars agree this short story and other golem tales inspired novelist Mary Wollstonecraft Shelley in her creation of Frankenstein's monster. The golem continues to appear in modern literature and has been featured on screen in television shows like Supernatural and Grimm. Marvel Comics resurrected the Golem of Prague as a heroic character in The Incredible Hawk, and Golems appear in the fantasy role-playing game Dungeons and & Dragons and the sandbox video game Minecraft. In modern Hebrew, Golem is used to mean dumb or helpless, likely based on the legend's depictions of the creatures as only capable of following simple instructions correctly. In Western culture, the golem continues to be a shadowy, elusive figure of the things we fear may grow beyond our control. The golem has been the atomic bomb, the computer, and industrialization. The golem is unique in its man-made creation, and its inhabitation, not of dark, deep forest or misty, desolate moors, but of urban cityscapes. And despite the golem's closeness to our everyday life, his identity remains largely a mystery. We can all clearly call to mind the image of a vampire, a werewolf, or a witch, but the golem remains only a vaguely human figure, with no descriptive features. Perhaps the golem is nothing but myth and legend. Perhaps the last golem was destroyed in Prague hundreds of years ago, and left to turn to dust in a dark attic. Or perhaps golems are all around us, quietly doing the bidding of their creators. Thanks for listening to Greybeard's Jewels, the step into the unknown. If you've enjoyed today's episode, please subscribe to the podcast on Spotify or wherever you like to listen. Research and writing for the episode was done by Katie from the reference desk. If you're interested in these services, please see our show notes for the links. Thank you.